uncivilized, Daisy. Why can't we talk about crops or something? Civilization's going to pieces. I began to be a terrible pessimist about things. Have you read uh, The Rise of Colored Empires by this man, Goddard? Why no? Well, it's a fine book, and everybody ought to read it. The idea is, if we don't look out, the, right, the white race will be utterly submerged. It's a scientific fact. It's been proven. Tom is getting really profound. He's been reading deep books with long words in them. What was that word we... Well, these books are all scientific. This fellow has the whole thing worked out. It's up to us, who are the dominant race, to watch out, or the other races will have control of things. You've got to beat them back. You ought to live in California. I'll tell you a family secret. It's about the butler's nose. Do you want to know about the butler's nose? Yeah, that's why I came here tonight. Well, he wasn't always a butler. He used to be a silver polisher. I'd love to see you at my table, Nick. You remind me of a rose, an absolute rose. Doesn't he? An absolute rose. It was my neighbor. Shh, don't talk. I want to hear what happens. Is something happening? You don't know? I thought everyone knew. I don't. Tom has a woman in New York. Got some woman? The silhouette of a moving cat wavered across the moonlight, and turning my head to watch it, I saw that I was not alone. Fifty feet away, a figure had emerged from the shadow of my neighbor's mansion and was standing with his hands in his pockets regarding the silver pepper of the stars. Mr. Gatsby himself. I decided to call to him. Miss Baker had mentioned him at dinner and that would do for an introduction, but I didn't call to him for he gave a sudden intimation that he was content to be alone. He stretched out his arms toward the dark water in a curious way, and far as I was from him, I could have sworn he was trembling. Involuntarily, I glanced seaward and distinguished nothing except a single green light, by noon far away, that might have been the, at the end of a dock. When I looked once more for Gatsby, he had vanished, and I was alone again in the unquiet darkness. What do you think? About what? About that. As a matter of fact, no need to assert. I assert. They're real. The books? Absolutely real. I thought they'd be a nice piece of durable cardboard. But, matter of fact, they're absolutely real. Here, let me show you. See, it's a bona fide piece of printed matter. It fooled me. This fellow's a regular Velasco. It's a triumph. What thornness. What realism. I've been drunk for about a week now. I thought it might sober me up to sit in a library. Pause it. I'm not sure yet. I've only been here about an hour. Did I tell you about the books? They're real. You told us. Nothing, nothing, give it everything you've got. Oh, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Disappeared, reappeared, made plans to go somewhere, and then lost each other. Searched for each other, found each other a few feet away. Sometime toward midnight, Tom Buchanan and Mrs. Wilson stood face to face discussing in impassioned voices whether Mrs. Wilson had any right to mention Daisy's name. It's just a noisy hall where there's a Daisy, Daisy, Daisy. I'll say it whenever I want to. Daisy, Daisy, Daisy. Daisy, Daisy, Daisy. Yes. Every morning, every evening, ain't we got fun? Not much money, oh, but honey, ain't we got fun? The rent's unpaid to you, and we having a bus. 
But smiles were made, dear, for people like us. In the winter, in the summer, don't we have fun? Times are bum and getting bummer, still we have fun. 